Welcome friends our today's book is idea is the easy part myths and realities of startup like who ever have a dream to build a dream startup they will be first obsessed with that dream they will think about that's very unique they will be fully optimistic and they'll be in a high risk taking mode like they are on a roller coaster ride or something and they think that they are going to put a dent on the universe someone like the exemplars of steve jobs elon musk bill gates and all but there are some realities there so brian dovey is the author he is actually a venture capitalist part of domain associates and all he even got an mba from harvard business school he is telling all those from the business school is different from what is the reality and it is different from what a, a founder is going to think so if you are to be if you plan to be a founder of a startup or if you are founder of a business this book is a must read for you published by matt holt an imprint of benabella books let's get started chapter 1 mystique of the startup world as we mentioned idea is the easy part so the point is that startups are unpredictable and dynamic in nature the book actually focuses on the stress for constant evolution adaptability and decision making that's what the important because grass is always greener in the fortune 500 boardroom but the reality is not like that it's a thrill ride is different from what is actually there so chapter 2 going for it do you have what it takes to be a successful entrepreneur so what does a founder look like this may be your vision what is a founder look like you would think like someone young and enthusiastic risk taking egomaniac or someone like like that but the point is that founder is not look like if he is focusing on financial gain only and he avoid hard work is not going to be a founder which an, a, an ideal founder if he is someone easily distractible he resist the strategic pivoting pivoting is changing something like what you think about now if you are resisting to change that is not a good founder if he is not resilient enough he is not adaptive and he is not having that long term commitment then he is not the founder look like then what does a founder look like the answer will be he should not be someone from a business school he don't necessary to be most of the great people we know are dropouts and all so it's not a benchmark he is not someone who just got an mba from harvard or someone else like that ethnicity where he is coming from also doesn't matter diversity in that ethnicity if there is a group of founders that actually improve the results and gender people think that only male entrepreneurs will succeed but the real proof is that lot of women entrepreneurs are succeeding also so uh, that is a myth founder is not necessary to be a man and age is like a fine wine more the age you have done more experience and more learning so less age or being young is not a criteria for a good founder motivation he should be motivated by passion rather than profit that is the good founder look like you don't have to be the jack of all trades you can be expert on something else like if you look at steve jobs and all he is expert on something he don't know much about technical and all but he just exam his attention to details and excellent marketing skills and such things was making him succeed succeeded on that but other things were done by someone else in the apple personality stay true to your own style it doesn't necessary to be an extrovert to be a good founder introvert can be there are a lot of people we consider them as nerds like bill gates elon musk elon musk even stammer when he's talking and all so stay to your own style it doesn't matter you don't necessary to have to be an ex like a like a blasting extrovert to be and risk appetite 
you should not be someone who don't care about risk you should be someone who stay hungry yet be cautious be strategic be going for what you try to evaluate the risk that is all the things what it look like to be a good founder chapter 3 what makes a good idea for startup we think that breakthrough innovation or a new technology is essential for a startup success which is not the case the book debunks the notion also people think also the opposite way improving the existing products can only guarantee success in actual fact both of them is wrong brandovi introduced five criteria to evaluate an a successful startup or a company first one market is it really attending a true unmet need people think of talk about lot of needs it is attending but go to the core of that and see whether it is really attending that unmet need second thing is that identify a competitive response whatever you are trying to do most of the time there will be someone who already have done before there is someone already capitalizing that market so just understand what are the competitor response how the competitors will respond to your idea and how much you are resilient to that third thing is that capacity to scale you can see lot of great people have great invention but you don't see it there you don't see it on your normal life and all because there should be a capacity to scale then only a business will work if elon musk factory can only make one tesla in one year or something is not going to be successful the success of tesla factory is that that scalability whatever you have now if even if elon musk plan to make a mobile phone or anything else he can scale it on that factory because that is that level of scalability is there so that is really important whatever you are trying to make you should think about how much i can scale then only it will work then establishing the unfair advantage that is really important maybe you are expert on something that really make that company unique so that unfair advantage is important otherwise if someone if you don't have an advantage someone come with a better unfair advantage they can take over your business finally the fifth one is the financial aspect is the business ability to generate enough cash before it run out of capital even bill gates when he was making by microsoft and all founding microsoft that time he was making sure that at least one year of expenses cash is available in the bank so you should always think about in that way how much capital i am having enough so that i am have available before i run out of capital so that you will able to generate profit and continue with the business chapter 4 what vcs look for or venture capitalists look for venture capitalists actually they are you don't think that you can just just convince them by telling something or exaggeration or something they always go through evaluation not by mere choices that's not the thing should always think that venture capitalist they are not doing a transaction they are trying to become into partnership with your business they are going to take a stake out of your business so focus on the potential value rather than inflated value those people they will look at the potential capability like if you look at any company stock like whatever it is even tesla uber even uber is not that much profitable but they are always considering the potential value that's why venture capitalism is funding the company that's why it's still surviving otherwise the market model wise it is not a profitable market so far same thing applied to many other companies like tesla and all these things all of people are putting that value it is a potential value in the future that's all the stock and other things are bought and seek venture capitalist funding as late as possible because people think that 
it is uh, it is good to get venture capitalists as early as possible but the point is that you are going to give a major chunk of your equity of your or a partnership or a share of your business to someone else if you have to think about a potential value and that business go and become a 1 billion and later that small portion percentage or a portion is a big amount so try to seek funding as late as possible try to run it with your own fund at least 100000 dollar a founder is putting into that that's ideal 500000 is best somewhere in the middle is good something like that and founders intangibles that's also what uh, venture capitalists look for like what is the character of this person how this person is committed to it what is his competence what is his past history how what he done in the early business how he deal with that all those things are also really important then post funding relationship venture capitalists they are not just like bank they are something more so you have to highlight a collaborative partnership that's what brand of is telling you should think it in that way venture capitalist chapter 5 simplifying people and culture The point is that hiring it should be more strategic. You should invest in key personnel who will drive the value to your company. So don't just make some post because every other company have that post. If that particular position is not driving a value, should not hire for it, especially in the early stages. Then you should hire for character. You should hire for attitude rather than aptitude. that's important and also hiring for adaptability same like a startup or a founder should be resilient and adaptable the hiring the especially the early hire should be able to handle the rapid changes they should be adaptable to that then only they can survive and the management even if you hire for management positions and all make sure that you hire hands on and hand soft people to have a balance in a startup if you hire all software engineers and then put one of the person as a manager it is not an ideal combination to survive and decision making and delegation and transparency like when you are making a decision it should be try to make as much transparent as possible and try to delegate some decisions and put some autonomy and authority on that that will also improve success of a startup it's not only the idea people and culture also matters something more on people and culture flexible management metrics if you give some unrealistic performance metrics non achievable targets like that such thing will not work you should be making the flexible management metrics so that people able to get uh, come uh, collaborate each other and equity compensation that's really really important because when you're making a startup you're not going to get revenue soon so in that case best option is to be having that equity compensation like they will be rewarded with a percentage of equity which will be actually hold that it will not be able to get it and cash it as early as possible it will have some durations and all so such things is important in to have a more commitment they feel like it's their own company like that support your team that's also important like when you have a trouble when your team is in trouble you should support your team focus on removing the demotivators there are a lot of people who just be smart at something but they will be making demotivating the other team they are like like a, a, a black sheep inside A, a group of people like that so try to address such issues of mission drip, drifting and bureaucratic creep and all and one last important thing regarding people and culture you should be dare enough to fire someone there should be some necessary firings if you think that okay that let let us wait for some time let us see how this so you are going to take a big risk so there should be some necessary firings that is really important as well you should always keep that as a tool in the people and culture on team building and management separate project failures from people failure that is important 
because a car actually need both a gasoline as well as brake so the point is that a visionary cfo is actually going to make some chaos like what steve jobs have done a prudent cfo who make moderate that case if you take it in another example like steve jobs and tim cook he hired tim cook specially for a reason because steve jobs was a visionary but he is not good in operations or something like that so he just invited tim he is an expert in excel thinking it's microsoft like out of operational precision and all he's not a visionary tim so he tried to moderate that chaos and steve jobs make that chaos so it balance each other that's how it works so chapter 6 execution is the hard part because that's really important even if you have all the ideas even you know what to do what not to do execution or doing something that's really what matters so success demands a blend of focus flexibility and creative problem solving that's really important <clears throat> so the point is that mental clutter you just have to take out that mental clutter in the execution specially should be very clear on what to execute that's really important and dangers of perfectionism that should not strive for perfectionism try to, to strive for excellence and do that and also pivoting should always be ready to pivot even while doing execution that's important and strategic alliances that's that's really important especially on execution because you're not able to do everything from your side there should be some strategic alliances to just make the execution smoother uh, also one another thing is that when you are doing execution you should think outside the box like you should not always think on a on a way which already the industry is running you can think outside the box should that take importance that really matters in both case if you hiring for fresh people in execution also experience but for execution specially experienced leadership is very valuable rather than a non experienced execution those are the chapters but the book ending with some doviism like some learnings or fundamentals mere brain do we still we'll grow go through that is telling about opportunity that's some subheadings opportunity is telling those who hurt with a new idea will fight for it but those who benefit will be skeptical so just when you are finding an opportunity this is the keep that in mind and also an opportunity can be only encashed or started if we you have a minimum viable product that's really important and another thing for opportunity great entrepreneurs they wait for the deal where the odds of winning is more in their favor no great entrepreneurs will go on some opportunity where odds of winning are 50 50 if your odds of winning are 90 to 10 then you should go for it that is a doviism about opportunity so on starting the company play to win that is really important don't just do something even you should be persistent enough to win the game when you're starting the company not to lose and you don't have to be a in or you don't have to have an a in everything when you are starting a company not necessary you can be a in few things and c in good enough in other things but it's best to know like for example if you are a start a founder who specialized on some pharmacy pharma for me or some other industry or anything like that you may not be aware about accounting or anything like that but some fundamental understanding is good and mainly one important thing before you start a company is that think of it at a, as a test that it will prove your idea wrong as we mentioned earlier idea is the easiest part but before you're starting company make sure that it is a test that will prove your idea wrong so how much you can afford to lose on making your idea wrong on venture capital it is more about because brand do is a venture capitalist that's more about that he's telling that it is usually the jockey not the horse that drives success 
So horse is someone like, say, a, a venture capitalist or something like a moving thing. But the jockey, whoever is riding that, who if he's a founder or or even venture capitalist in the board and all, those are the people who is driving the success, even though horse have that power. So the point is that you will all, this is something from Jeff Bezos also, like, you should regret about the deals you do, you did not do, not the deals you did and that failed. That's important. Because when you have something, an opportunity or something like that, do go for it if you think that you will regret about it after some years. If that is not the case, it's fine. But always you will regret the deals you did not do because you don't know how much it is going to multiply or grow exponentially in the future. On operations, that's another part, is that great idea, poorly executed, almost always fail. But an okay idea that is well executed will usually succeed. So when you are working on operations, your goal is to make not 20-80. If you know the Pareto principle and all, you should focus on 80-20. That's really important. The 80 percentage of consideration should be there rather than working on 20 things operation remaining leave it or ignore it like that so forecast on taking action forecast especially in operations and all when you are forecasting it forecast in a way by to take action not an ability to guess that's not that's not the good operation is talking about also when your operations try to do new stuff stop doing the bad stuff and do good things better. Like a lot of quality management techniques are there about Six Sigma and other things, but generally lean technique and all, Toyota reproduction system and all. But that's about operations. Now on mergers or on merging to another company or acquiring something and all. What Brian Dove is telling, if one rock doesn't float, why do you think those two rocks tied together will float. It will both will go down. So that's the thing. If one is failing, it is not necessary if we tie to something else. Only do a merger if a potential upside have a lot of margin of error. So even if you fail, you have a longer margin of success. Now on carriers, like especially on a founder career and all. Don't eat your spinach unless you love it. Otherwise, it will not work. Also, try to make new mistakes. That's all such books and all is talking about. If somebody has done already such mistake, try to avoid that. Try to make some new mistakes. Not the same what others have already done earlier. On the other hand, don't learn too much from your mistakes. That's also important. Then you cannot act on it. You will be just always thinking about mistakes and all. Don't learn too much. Just try to learn what is enough and then proceed. Strengthen your strengths and make your weakness acceptable. You can try to hold your weakness acceptable and just polish your strength and become more with that. So pay attention to also because when you are in a career and all, you are going to get a lot of advice and all. So, pay attention to the experience of the people who is giving you the advice. That's also important. Anybody can give advice. But look at who is giving the advice and then take on further. That's the end of the book. So, I hope you enjoy the book. Thank you for watching. And if you like, we have another book in our channel called The New Way to Think by Roger L. Martin and published by Harvard Business Review. Have a look on it. Thank you then. Bye for now.